Hello guys, welcome back. In today's tutorial, we are going to go over how you guys go about adding room tags to your floor plan. So the first thing you guys want to make sure that you are in a floor plan view. So I am currently in my first floor, floor plan. I want to go up to my architecture tab. Once I'm in my architecture tab, I want to go over to the room and area. Once I'm in room and area, I want to select room and I'm just going to click one time. Once I click once, you guys are going to notice that my menu at the top has changed. As well as what's happening here on my properties menu. So right now I have just the normal room tag selected. I will show you guys how to find other options that you guys have available once we have the tags placed. And then you guys just wanna make sure that what is under upper limits is the same as the floor plan that you guys are currently working on. All right, so if I'm in my floor plan view, um, what I want to do is look for where Revit is placing those room tags. So right now you guys will see that the rooms where the, the boundaries of that room has been defined will automatically create a room tag for that area. So for me, um, once I see that room has been created, I want to click once to set that room tag down. Once I've set that room tag down, I just want to make my way around my floor plan here. And we're not really too concerned with um, which rooms we tag first or last um, because we're going to, we have the opportunity once we place the tags to go back in and actually um, change the room names and change the room numbers. So it's really not a big deal if you guys don't follow a particular order when you guys are placing the room tags themselves. Okay. Now one thing I do want you guys to notice as I go to place a room tag within the larger area, um, it is going to count your room as a full room if there are no boundaries placed or defined within the space. So if I'm looking at my um, larger area here, if this is for pur purpose of example, my dining area, I have my kitchen area and my living room, and I want those to actually have their own separate room tags, then I now have to actually come out of this tool before I actually place the room tags, I have to first define the boundaries. So I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard to come out of that tool and I want to actually come up to where it says room separator and this is going to allow you guys to um, place lines to be able to um, define the space. So I'm just going to click once on room separator. Once I've clicked once I have to select how I want to draw um, those room boundaries. So I'm just going to use the normal line tool here and I just want to go in and define where those room def definitions need to be. So for instance, if this is my hall, this is my dining area, then I want to have a boundary line that's going to separate that area. And one thing that's kind of cool when you guys are um, creating your boundary lines is your walls are also um, going to help you to define. So it doesn't have to be something that's a closed loop. Um, if you have, for instance, um, where you're able to place those endpoints of your line onto something like your wall, then you don't have to worry about closing up this whole area or um, really defining or, I guess, um, creating a shape that has a closed loop. So that's kind of cool about that. And then um, for me, because I'm going to define this full area here as my dining area, I just want to um, close this area up as well. And then come into my um, kitchen and my living room area here, I might just want to draw a line that's com that comes down here. 
So right now, if we're looking at this larger space, we've um, separated it into four different areas. So this area, we have this long area here. We have the area um, defined as the dining, and then we ha have the hall area. So now if I come back up to my room tool and I click once, and I come back down to add a room, it's now allowing me to add rooms to the spaces that I've defined. So I'm going to just click once to set those rooms down. And press escape to completely come out of that. Now, I know you guys are probably like, well, I probably don't want my <laughs> room separator lines showing. So you guys can actually, once you've placed your rooms, you can go back in and select those lines. And all I'm doing is clicking, holding down my control, and I'm selecting all of those room separator lines. I'm going to right click, hide in view, and elements. And that would allow me to um, hide those room separator lines so you guys don't have to see those um, within your floor plan. Now, if you guys want to change um, the name of your rooms, you guys want to click on the tag itself. Just click once. Once you've clicked once, you guys will see um, you can kind of hover with your cursor over the room tag itself. Click within that box and it will allow you guys to type in um, what the name of that room is. So for purpose of example, I'm just going to type in study and enter to come out of that. And then I can just go around and define each of those rooms. So you just want to click once on that tag. Once you've clicked once, you want to click um, on the room tag itself. So you click once, come up to where the room tag is highlighted, click within there, and then you guys can just type in what those rooms are on your keyboard. And I'm not gonna do all of them, but um, you guys get the purpose of that. And then to change the room number, um, it will be the same action. You guys will click on the tag, um, move your cursor to highlight the number, and then you guys want to click within that box and you guys can define what that um, room number would be. Now, if you guys don't want to have the room number or you guys want to add additional information to your tags, you guys can click on the tag itself, come over to your properties bar. If you click on the flyout that says room tag, nine times out of 10, Revit will give you guys a few options. So just depending on the Revit you guys are using, it will give you guys certain options here. So I have the option to do a room tag with area and a room tag with volume. So if I was to, for purpose of example, select the room tag with area, it will also give the square footage of that area as well. Um, and then it, you know, as you guys get a little bit more advanced with Revit, um, it also will give you guys the option to load in a specialty tag you guys have created. Um, so you guys have a lot of different options when it comes to creating and adding your room tags. But this is pretty much the basics of how you guys get your room tags in there. Remember, um, if you guys have a larger space, you want to break it down, um, please use those room separator lines. Um, know that you guys can hide them later once you get your rooms in there. Um, but I hope this has helped you guys. If you guys found the video helpful. Um, please hit the like and subscribe and please feel free to leave me a comment on videos that you guys would be interested in seeing. Thank you guys for joining me today.